Good morning, afternoon or evening, depending where you're joining us from. I'm Catherine McGuinness, Policy Chair at the City of London Corporation, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the launch of the new IRSG report, prepared in partnership with KPMG, accelerating the S in ESG, a roadmap for global progress on social standards. Thank you to our speakers and panellists for giving up their val valuable time to join us today. And I'm very pleased to welcome Alexandra Skeggs and Maria Devich from KPMG to tell us about the report, and indeed our expert panel who are going to be discussing some of the findings later. I don't think I need to because it's now second nature, but let me start with a little bit of housekeeping about the call. Please be aware that today's event is being recorded and may be shared on our digital platforms in the coming days. Please post any questions that you may have in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen and we'll try to answer some of those later on in the session. And if you have any technical issues, please post your query in the chat box and the team will try to help you. And finally, you'll all receive a link to the report after today's event, which we aim to wrap up at around three o'clock UK time. Before I hand over to Alexandra and Maria, I'd like to say just a few words on the significance of the S, the social, in ESG, and why this report is so important. Over recent months, we've seen real progress being made by companies on the E and the G, driven by a determination to build back better. Out of a health crisis has emerged a renewed focus on tackling the climate crisis achieving a better understanding of our impact on the environment and promoting high governance standards and crucially ensuring that those standards will be met. Social factors, however, haven't been given the same attention. That is, until now. The events of the past year have been a stark reminder of the inequalities that still exist across society. The COVID-19 pandemic, the Black Lives Matter protests, and the Me Too movement have each been a powerful force for much needed social change, driving a recognition that we all have an important part to play from government, local communities to business. Social issues are now amongst the most pressing for companies in all markets as stakeholders seek to understand how the firm they work for, buy from or invest in, treat the people whose lives their operations touch. But a major stumbling block has been the complexity of capturing the S in ESG. Put simply, the E and G factors are easier to define and quantify. We could have a debate about that, but they're probably easier to define and quantify. While the motivation may be there, a lack of consistency and comparability in approaches remains a key challenge on the S, a challenge that must be addressed if we're to achieve more socially sustainable investing and truly build back better. It's in response to that challenge that the IRSG, in partnership with KPMG, undertook this work. This timely report identifies the recent trends that have brought social issues to the fore. It highlights the challenges that we need to address to achieve further progress, and crucially, it gives us recommendations for how this can be achieved. We've identified a clear need for a global approach to social principles and standards to ensure better overall outcomes and enable the comparability that's essential for accountability. We also call for a lead social principle to be chosen to prioritise and narrow focus in order to build momentum, find common ground across jurisdictions and drive wider social transformation. Our recommendations have been informed by extensive engagement with stakeholders, including global standard setters from around the world. And I'd like to finish by thanking everyone who's been involved, either through our roundtables or interviews, and in particular, of course, KPMG for holding the pen on the report. Your contributions have been invaluable in building a comprehensive view of the social component of ESG and how public policy, companies and financial markets participants can drive more socially sustainable investment. We look forward to working with you as we seek to take the recommendations forward. So without further ado, I'm now going to hand over to Alexandra Skeggs and Maria Devich to tell us more about the report. Alexandra and Maria, over to you. 
Thank you. We're delighted that social factors, along with environmental and corporate governance, are garnering increasing expectation as part of that broader focus on, on ESG. At the same time, we see the need for a better understanding of social factors and for alignment globally on acceptable standards. On the next page, please, we see that the globalization of trade means the impact of what we buy, produce, finance and own has far reaching consequences. Thanks to the internet and the media, including social media, this impact is gaining greater visibility. Consumers are willing to pay more to ethical retailers, with brand trust and loyalty being linked to purposeful business practice. Expectations of governments, too, have fundamentally changed and regulation is already increasing. Businesses must adapt to this changing landscape, but can also capitalise on this change by innovating across products, services, markets and operations. They must look internally as well as externally at their reach through their supply chain and their alliances. Our report acknowledges the great strides that many policymakers, organisations and businesses have made on progress progressing social principles, standards and metrics. It seeks to build on this, providing a roadmap for how to accelerate the developments, and we encourage further collaboration and alignment as multiple and inconsistent frameworks and regulatory fragmentation will lead to stagnation, increased inequality, and at worst could lead to social arbitrage. Just as protecting the environment has a great social impact, so too does social development create a positive environmental impact. They are force multipliers of each other. So by ensuring social agendas progress alongside the environmental, it does not detract from the latter, but instead achieves more than the sum of the parts. We equally look to learn lessons from climate change and its response. We recognize how it has furthered the broader environmental agenda, raising awareness from the consumer to the C-suite. Public policy has played a key role here, and so too have acts of leadership. And this includes Mark Carney's famous February 2020 speech, a pivotal moment for businesses to think about their operating models as well as their commercial opportunities. We recognize that we must act now, and our recommendations are intended to form a roadmap on which to instigate a dialogue. In this report, we've made seven recommendations, which we will now outline. Next slide, please. The first recommendation is that global coherence should be pursued. This should start with agreeing the global priority principles or outcomes for the Financial Services Authority to contribute to or factor into its operations. A global approach will ensure better overall outcomes and provide the necessary comparability and thus accountability. Once consensus has been achieved on principles, an agreement amongst policymakers is then needed on a common set of metrics. Once such comparable data is established, the setting of common standards is possible and adoption effective. Our second recommendation is that minimum standards or a floor approach should be defined once those principles and metrics are set. By setting minimum standards, the responsibility towards social factors is acknowledged and a level playing field provided. At the same time, the opportunity for companies to differentiate themselves by voluntarily agreeing a higher standard is presented. It is recognised that to achieve global coherence, challenges including different starting points, economic development status and societal norms exist. Countries must be supported and facilitated in their transition while looking to achieve compliance as early as possible for greater societal impact and market efficiency of businesses. Thus, those minimum standards may benefit from having a staged compliance date or level. We recommend that mechanisms to raise these standards should be considered and incorporated into the framework to set expectations appropriately. Our third recommendation is that a single societal principle needs to be championed to drive greater momentum. This focus will address the challenge caused by the breadth of social factors, where the complexity of seeking alignment and advancing many principles concurrently risks stagnation. The purpose is not for one factor to be placed above others, but to ensure we don't miss seeing the wood for the trees. By agreeing a lead social principle and creating meaningful momentum in its definition, standards and adoption, this evident success should drive further momentum in other social factors. 
we consider that modern slavery is an appropriate issue for a strong lead principle. It is pervasive. It affects economies of all sizes and all stages of development. There is also significant existing work in multiple jurisdictions upon which we can draw. Our four remaining recommendations set out some more detailed implementation suggestions, and I'll pass over to Maria Devich to run you through them. Thank you, Alexandra, and good afternoon, all. So our fourth recommendation on the next slide, please. So our fourth recommendation relates to achieving the right balance of granularity for social principles and standards to be meaningful. This should prevent companies from ticking a box without addressing the underlying issue or where their narrative may be weaker. Accommodate for a wide range of firms across the financial services industry and afford flexibility as ambition and sophistication uh, increase over time. Our fifth recommendation targets all legislative and rulemaking bodies, calling for more progressive legislation. What we mean here is using regulation in tandem with other tools to drive sustained improvement in social outcomes. Innovative mechanisms should be deployed to incentivize firms to meet and exceed social standards. This could include, for example, linking adherence for social standards as a prerequisite for tax relief or access to finance. Public policy has a broad role to play from promoting global consistency, balancing harmonization to publishing policy requirements. The policy maker will, makers will need to agree on a global social principles, standards and a set of metrics to ensure that everyone has a common set of areas to focus on. Public policy should also help with the provision of data. For example, this may include imposition of new obligations on issuers to provide data in a standard form. Public policy is a powerful mechanism to stimulate businesses into making progressive change. It can simply be the requirement to report on current levels rather than the expectation to meet targets. A great example here is a gender pay gap reporting in the UK. Next slide, please. The sixth recommendation of the report is focused on financial services firms and how they must take responsibility to improve social standards across their own practices, their supply chains and practices they facilitate. Large firms should act as catalysts for change by applying consistent standards across all jurisdictions in which they operate to elevate social standards. Firms should use all levers available, including costs and availability of capital, to differentiate between good and poor social performance and divest where appropriate. Greater accountability and strengthened oversight are required for firms to uphold social principles and demonstrate stewardship, duty of care and positive social conduct. Achieving social goals will require collaboration and more impactful corporate investment. For example, the buy-side firms can contribute to efforts to eradicate modern slavery by incorporating human rights and modern slavery into the investment due diligence and through active engagement with the investee companies. Whilst there are notable examples of implementation of social standards leading to increased profitability and enhanced performance, the social principles and standards should not be designed with the intention of increasing profitability, but to address existing failings in, in business practices. Improved profitability should follow, but not be the aim. The reward for social responsibility should be enhanced credibility, reputation and resilience. Our final recommendation is a call to action. In order to achieve recommendations set out in this report, we must build momentum quickly to drive social change. This should come from both the financial services industry as well as global policymakers. To lead this agenda, a reputable ambassador and flag bearer should be appointed in the social space, similar to Mark Carney for climate change. This individual should initially promote eradication of modern slavery as a lead social principle, as this report suggests, and gradually expand focus on socially sustainable finance more broadly. There is a real need to elevate awareness of the social impact and consciousness for social change. A series of upcoming high-profile events this year, including the G20 and COP26 summits, provide tremendous opportunities for the international community to recognize socially sustainable finance as an urgent priority. Many thanks, and I will now hand over to Michael. <laughs> 